Like many of you, we battled depression during life's ups and downs. Music has always been the one thing that we could rely on to get us through the tough times that we all face. Follow us on our journey as we discuss the healing power of music, interview bands, break down genres, review band biographies, and more. This is the When Words Fail Music Speaks Podcast with Blake Mosley and James Cox. Hey everybody, welcome to When Words Fail Music Speaks. My name is Blake Mosley. Uh, today I'm joined by my co-host James Cox. How's it going, buddy? Hey yo, how are you doing? Wonderful. Um, uh, and uh, we have another special guest on the show today. Uh, Tony, how's it going? Hey, so far so good. Cool. Awesome, man. Um, well, uh, just to tell our listeners, just in case they're not familiar with you, uh, we've got a little introduction for you here. So um, uh, he's the current bassist for industrial metal bands uh, Static X and Fear Factory uh, and the vocalist and bassist for Assassino. He is the former bassist for metal bands Prong, Soulfly, Ministry, and Possessed. Um, he's been a part of making some of the most prolific albums in history and has been all over the world and then some. Uh, we're so grateful to have him t- uh, here today with us. Uh, everyone, please welcome Mr. Tony Campos. Tony, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, absolutely. Hey. Absolutely. So, uh, Tony, I, I, I'm not going to pretend like you know me because you've probably met like <laughs> millions of fans and everything. But I've, saw, but I've seen Dynamic X three times. And I met you twice, and all in both times you were super nice to me. So I thank you for for that. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and uh, and on one show, um, you actually came out after the uh, after the show and said that I was like crazy. Because, <laughs> that's true because I have a walker, and and uh, on that uh, on that uh, show that I saw you on, I was in the front row, sitting down on my walker, and you said, "Hey, uh, we got to we got a guy here with the walker. Be careful, you know, around him. And so I went and thank him to that too, because who knows where I might have been, you know? Yeah. Hell <laughs> uh, yeah. Hell yeah. Out there, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I was in the front row, so it's not that the pit pit, but uh, it was uh, a dangerous was, spot. Uh, to be in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, think, yeah. You have some crazy fan. What is the what is the most crazy fan that you ever 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 encountered? Uh, that's hard to pick out because there's a lot of crazy ones out there, man. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, I don't know. I can't. Nothing like yeah. dangerous, though, it, right? It, like, it's, all, it's all like, nutty, you know. From the, yeah. the guys, the guys crowd surfing in wheelchairs, the guys, yeah. Crowd surfing with their, you know, artificial leg in the, in the air, you know. Right. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, yeah. sometimes, course, sometimes. Yeah. Um, so I was listening to, to a previous podcast before we had you coming on, and uh, you said that your dad had a couple of acoustic guitars. Uh, then your friend uh, either let you borrow or let you have a your first bass. Um, what was it about the bass that made you stay with it as opposed to the guitar? Um, I, I don't, I don't know what exactly made me stay with it. I mean, I guess it was just my friend already played guitar and like, you know, it's like, it was like, Hey, Tony, get a bass. I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, that's, pretty, that's pretty much why I started playing bass. Uh, and then I, I jammed with that kid for, for a while, maybe six months or something. And then, uh, he moved out of the neighborhood and, it, but by then, I'd already fallen in love with the instrument, and so you know, I just I kept playing. Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi. Was uh was your dad like a, a pretty steady guitarist, or did he have like a few no. different instruments he played with? No, he he had he had a couple of uh, of acoustics. I remember he, he had laying around when I was a kid, and and I mess around with them, but I never really like took it seriously, you know. Yeah. Uh, dad, dad himself didn't really play. Um, I, I think he did, uh, when he was younger, but, uh, then he lost his pinky, his, uh, his left the pinky on his left hand at a, during a, a work accident. So I guess that's when he stopped playing, but, uh, but the guitars were still there. So. Right. 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 Um, so Give me. it's, it's always, it's always amazing that you can find, um, uh, the the purposeful that you like on with some instruments. Some instruments just, just gravitate towards you, and some don't. So yeah, that's that's very cool. You know, um, 
I don't know what it was about about bass guitar, but uh, yeah. something about it just. There's oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Once, once once I started playing it and you know got it got into it and, and really got into the music, it, you know something about it just you know made me want to keep playing it even after my friend moved out. You know, right moved out of the neighborhood. And that's a oh. common response too. Like with with a lot of bassists that we've interviewed, uh, it's been you know like that wasn't your first choice. It just kind of happened. Uh, and, uh, but then there's something, like you said, just something that clicks. Uh, I think my brother-in-law who plays bass is the only person of I've ever heard that was like, I'm going to, that is me. That's what I'm going to get out, <laughs> set out to play. And, uh, and he, and he crushes it. He does a great job with it. Um, uh, but you usually don't hear it. It's either like I, I wanted to play guitar, but there was already two guitarists and I just got stuck playing bass. Or if you're a drummer and you're in a band full of brothers, like a few that we've talked to and they're like, Little brother plays the drums because we're gonna play guitar. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> um, so, oh, go ahead, James. I'm sorry, man. So, uh, Shadow Zone, I think, is like um, one of the best albums that you put in, and you know, uh, so far, um, with that, the gigs. Um, Thank you. Uh, but I, but I did read that uh, that you, that the band worked with um, Jonathan Jonathan Davis from Corn. Uh, and y'all were greatly influenced on the direction of the album Shadow Zone, right? So, uh, could you explain? Could you explain to us how how working with them inspired that that album? Well, actually, it wasn't Jonathan Davis. Um, it was uh, well at first. It it was because we went through a couple different producers before uh, we ended up, ended up with uh, Josh Abraham on that record. Uh, mm -hmm. But one of the guys. Uh, I forget his name, but he produced the Queen of the Dam soundtrack with Jonathan Davis. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So he came in and, and you know, we worked with him for like a week and uh, just wasn't clicking. But, uh, but yeah, we did work with that guy for a week. I, I don't remember if anything that we came up with during the time with him ended up on the record or not. Right. Uh, I, 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 think if anyone had uh had more of an impact it would have been uh josh abraham on that record because yeah. we were doing i think we did like uh, a week and a half two weeks of pre-production with josh there at the rehearsal space just jamming out songs trying different ideas and stuff so nice. yeah, he would have more influence on, on on what that record ended up sounding like right the producer. yeah so you guys didn't have a drummer uh for that album correct uh yeah um yeah uh, during that time uh is when uh you know kenny left the band and mm. uh and then we went into the studio uh not really knowing what the drum situation was going to be like uh, and uh you know our, our producer josh uh he was like let me make a phone call <laughs> Yeah. And he's on the phone and he's like, Hey, what are you doing on Monday? You want to come play on a static record? Okay. Uh, we'll see you Monday. <laughs> and he turns to us and he's like, I, I, Don't worry. I got it covered. So we don't know who's coming in, what's going on. Uh, so we get to the studio Monday and uh, uh, Josh Freeze walks in through the door. Mm. And, yeah. you know, without having heard a single note, uh, he comes in and does the whole record in a day and a half. So. Nice. Wow. That's amazing, too. Very like impressive. Yeah. Day and a half. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's gotta be like a like a, a, a single thing just right yeah all right, let me listen to the song he, he writes some notes and he goes in you know does two three takes nails everyone and you know like i said within a day and a half the, the record was done so he uh, took some liberties going in there um uh to do the recording they, it, there wasn't like any like this has to be done this has to be done like you know basic structure do your thing yeah, well, you know the 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 song arrangements were already there, so right, the, you know the the bones of, of of the song were already there. He just had to go in and lay down the foundation. You know, yeah. so cool. That's yeah. a, that's a neat story. Very, 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 very impressive thing to see, man. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think I've ever heard of a drummer like like knocked it out like a day and a half. That's that's incredible. You know? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, that shows his um his expertise in drumming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so in 20, um, 2007, 2008, 
Uh, y'all played Oz for the first time, correct? About uh, 2009. 2009. Okay, I'm fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So, uh, could you tell us about what? Who, no, what I'm, I'm I'm like uh, jumping a decade ahead. Uh, 1999 was the first time we played Oz. Oh, okay. Uh, 2007 was the third time we played Oz. That was the third uh, time. Okay. Pre Oz Fest with uh, Lamb of God and uh, right. and yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So going back to your first time, uh, can you uh, walk us through the whole day? I mean, like. Like who contacted the band to come and play, and and what was the atmosphere like, and everything? Um, management hooked that up for us. Uh, okay. Andy Gould was managing us at the time, and uh, he had he had good relations with with the Osbournes during that time. Um, so the, he got us on that you know the open not the opening stage, but the, what is it the the side stage. Uh, he got us on that on that rotating thing, and uh, yeah, that was awesome, man. Like it was our first tour, and I think that was the first tour we ever did on on an actual tour bus. So we were all excited. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, we made it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah, you know, all right, yeah. No more RV for us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, usually when bands start out, they have like a like a yeah, yeah. Our Back first band, couple band or something. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, excited about that. Uh, so, you know, after you know, obviously, a few years ago, any Static X fan learned about the passing of Wayne and how tragic that was. Um, uh, and, you know, and then it was announced that the band would continue on uh, with uh, a masked singer, Zero, um, wearing a mask that resembled Wayne's face. What was that initial reaction like from the fans? Uh, uh as far as the the mask goes uh there there, there was a bit of uh apprehension you know um but you know a- anyone who knew wayne would would have would have told you that he he would have totally been into that you know? sure. <laughs> he had yeah a, yeah had a really dark sense of humor so <laughs> 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 he just laughed at that uh but i think once once we got out and uh started doing shows and and you know, demonstrating to people how, you know, how it was supposed to be and, and the vibe that we were going for and pulling it off. I think, you know, everybody figured it out that, you know, like, oh, okay, it's a, it's a cool thing. You know? Yeah. Cause he had such an iconic everything. I mean, it, the guy was a, a wonderful front man, like all the way around, uh, stood out with his looks, uh, with his vocal uh, performance, and uh, just everything that he brought to the table was just so iconic. And you knew yeah. who Static X was, you know, the second that you saw like the music video pop up, you're like, oh yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it, so it, it, it's funny because uh, uh, I know he would hate this analogy, uh, but uh, Wayne was our uh, Bruce Dickinson and our Eddie. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he hated Iron Maiden, so he really, really? yeah, oh, he hated Iron Maiden with a passion. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Iron Maiden is great, dude. So, so he, hate, so he'd hate for me to compare him to Bruce Dickinson. <laughs> oh no, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's true. He was. He was. Yeah, the, oh, yeah. you know, he was. He was the the mascot and the front man of, of the band. Yeah. You know, I remember being probably ten years old watching mtv2 um and uh i I forget it was one of the music video shows that they used to have on back then but it was a song that uh mike shinoda from lincoln park uh teamed up with uh executioner uh the dj and then wayne was in that music video and like play guitar on the track i believe or something like that yeah Um, as far as i know he just uh showed up for the video uh, just for the video uh, okay yeah yeah um at the time, uh, both Lincoln Park and Static had the same management, so okay. uh, you know they uh, to hit up Wayne, said, "Hey, uh, I need somebody to come in and play guitar on this <laughs> uh, on, on the video," you know, yeah. and huh. figured you know the Executioner, Static X, you know, so yeah, he just yeah. went in and, and uh, did the video. Yeah, nice. what a cool collab too, man. And yeah, I mean, right? like yeah. that. Yeah. Honestly, that was my introduction to static X at that, at that age. Um, I was a big Lincoln park fan. Um, you know, new metal was like, kind of like what I was into at that time. 
and uh, I, see, I see this guy with hair that stands up to here playing guitar. And I was just like, this guy looks incredibly cool. Um, and, uh, you know, did some digging as much as I could dig at 10 years old uh, with a family computer that ran very slowly. Um, <laughs> and, you know, started just discovering Static X at such a young age. That was that was my introduction. Um, and based on that look, that's a very iconic look. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My introduction was um, was uh, the album. I think it was Machine with Code. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, when I heard that song, I'm like, oh my god, these guys are so great, dude. Yeah, so I had to get everything so I had to get all the CDs and you know, I mean physical copies, you know, back then. Yeah. Um now it's digital download. But um I'm um, going back to the to to uh Zero in the Mask. Um we all know now that Zero is a Zero Dope from the band Dope. Um uh how but, yeah, uh, um how how long did it take you to find it uh, Phil, or did you audition like like many many um auditions before you got to him or was he like a like a sherlock that you had to have him because he sounds just like him just like him you know yeah no um it, it, before we could even uh think of uh of looking for a vocalist uh just kind of fell in the into my lap there and uh I was like, "Oh shit, uh, <laughs> Wayne! Yeah, okay, this this might work." Hey, Koichi Kenny, check this out. It, it's funny because I, I sent those guys a, a a demo of Push It, and you know they both listened to it and like, "Yeah, this is Push It. I've heard this a million times." Like, uh, that's not Wayne. And like what? what? Oh wow, dude! <laughs> yeah, because the guy like moves, sounds like him, and just has yeah. the whole the whole. Um, I guess uh, not features, but um, he, he um captures, uh, yes, captures live in yes. The of what what he did, man. Exactly, man. Yeah, that's so great. Um, so uh, Project Regeneration Volume One came out in last year. I know, yeah, twenty twenty, right? Um, but there's talks about a Project Regeneration Volume Two coming out yeah, relatively it's soon. In the works, um. Uh, hit a few snags, uh, both business and personal wise. Particularly this year for me personally, it's just been a mm. fucking nightmare. Right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, it, it it really took me out of the headspace of working on anything. So I yeah. haven't really done much. Um, but I'm starting to get back in the swing of things, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, we uh, we can get. Uh, volume two done in in a timely manner but i don't want to i want to announce a timeline or anything you know because right. yeah. like last time we had to delay it delay volume yeah. one a couple times and pissed everybody off so i'm yeah. not saying anything yeah but, but going, going on that one i do have a question for you about that um could you explain why project project volume one was delayed a couple times was it due to the fact that trip trip iceland uh, found a found a legal dispute on you, or like was it something like bigger than that? No, he, that that never even uh, that was an issue. Uh, okay, that's just him running his mouth. Oh, <laughs> um, but no, it it it, uh, it just had had to do more with uh, with with how busy we got with the tour. Because initially, when you know, with, when we announced the tour, it was just going to be one U.S. run, and it snowballed into way more than we anticipated you know going overseas multiple times uh you know a second leg of a u.s tour so yeah that was really that was the majority of of reason for right. the okay yeah okay cool so uh we know you can't talk about when uh volume two is gonna come out, but uh can you kind of tell us what the fans can expect out of volume two? Uh well I, I want it to be consistent with uh the the production quality of uh volume one. So it's, it seems like one seamless continuous record, you know? Right. Uh, and it'll be you know the rest of uh the demos and vocal performances that wayne left behind and uh and you know a few other extras in there 
Gotcha. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, so you I have been working with um do you know Cazares? Is it Cazares or Cazares? Uh I believe he pronounced it uh Cazares. Cazar okay, Cazar. Uh, yeah, because it's, uh, it's very um confusing. I mean, uh, I mean, if you want to get uh, you know, if you want to get really proper, uh the the Spanish uh pronunciation is Cazares. Oh okay. Okay. nice there you go. Yeah, there we go. Right. If I can only talk, about it, yeah, but I think, but I think he's okay with uh, anything with pronounced Cazares. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, um, so you've been working with him, uh, for like years and years now, right? You've been working with him since Asesino and the Arfia Factory. Um, so was it inevitable that uh, that he invited you to play base for, base for Fear Factory when you worked in Asesino with him? Um, and what was it about working with him that, that made you and him click so well? Um, I don't know if it was inevitable, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm certainly thankful that it happened. Uh, yeah, having jammed with Dino in Asesino for over a decade before getting that, uh, Fear Factory opportunity, you know, like, it, it, like I already knew I can keep up with Dino. I right. Mean, we have a lot of the same, uh, you know, influences, uh, musically, you know, we came up on, on a lot of the same underground stuff. So, you know, jamming with Dino is, is you know, like jamming with an old friend, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. So it's awesome. Yeah. Cause I saw him with, uh, with divine heresy when, uh, Tommy Vex was, was the vocalist mm -hmm. and he was so nice to me, man. He, you know, he treated me kind. So, you know, yeah. so I can't wait to get them on the show. Do you know the thing also? Um, so with the um, new album, Ag Aggression Continuum, which is a great album, by the way, um, was the bass part already finished by him at the time, or do, or or were you brought in just to finish him? No, I, uh, Dino recorded all the bass guitar. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. nice, nice. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 you know the the. the I think the the whole ethos of a uh, of Fear Factory is just you know that have have that locked in machine type of percussion and you know you you can't get any tighter than you know playing along with you know playing both the guitar and the bass guitar you know in, right you know, locked yeah. in so yeah I get why why he does that uh, that's cool yeah. you know yeah so going back to us you know like. In number uh, number fifty seven of uh, episode number fifty seven of Metalocalypse, uh, you and the rest of the band made an appearance on there. Can you tell us what you know, kind of how that was and how that came you know, to be? I never saw that. Or, I never saw that, or uh, like didn't hear about it till years later. And uh, you know, I still haven't seen the episode. Uh, but as far as I know, uh, it was just. Uh, a mention uh, i don't know if the band actually appeared uh, okay that it, i they had something to do with the maid uh something she, she made a reference to assassino or something i don't know exactly oh what it was but uh <laughs> yeah i i'd have to go do some digging and uh, look that up because i have no idea <laughs> awesome yeah any excuse to watch but, but yeah that, that you oh. know i i, I would have loved to have uh made an actual appearance on, on that. On that show. That would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah that we, had, uh, we had, uh, Gene Hoagland, uh, on the show before. Um, and, uh, and it was, it was cool to talk to him and kind of pick his brain about how everything works with Metalocalypse. And, um, you know, that was, that was another show that I'd like dove into, uh, as soon as I discovered it and just had my mind blown. <laughs> just, a, just an amazing concept of a, of a tv yeah, show right? so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um uh, i got an email blast from um from Toronto, our 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 um pr that that you know got you on the show and i think you're just well as, as, uh, as we're thinking you but um uh, you're in a new band hail the horns and you all did a cover song of um kisses got a thunder yeah. Um. Can Can you decide? Oh, can you tell us uh, like like why you picked the song? Because it's it's Blake's favorite Kiss song ever. It is. <laughs> ever. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's definitely one of my favorite Kiss songs yeah. too. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. It's just like me and Rizzo had been talking about doing something for years now. And, uh, you know, he just hit me up one day um, and said, hey, uh, let's go do some covers, you know. And, and you know, like, like I said, you know, the, the this year has just been really shitty for me personally. And yeah. so he hit me up and he's like, eh, let's just go out and have some fun. And I'm like, yeah, OK, yeah. I just want to go out and have some fun. And uh, yeah. I got to go get away for a while and do something so let's jam on some covers and uh let's have a good time and uh and so he uh sent me this uh this idea to to do a god of thunder and i was like yeah i i think i can do a halfway decent gene simmons so uh yeah let me uh <laughs> let me drop some vocals and bass on it and uh you know so i wrote oh, that right. stuff here at the house and sent them back the files and a couple months later uh, they came back with uh, the the fully mixed songs. Like, all right, this came out cool. Man. So Fred, cool. That, I will tell you that that is the heaviest version I've ever heard in my life. That thing is brutal to the max. Dude, you, you, uh, it, 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 if that's the case, you got to check out uh, Death. Actually, did a cover. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Wow. On, nice. I forget what record it's off of. Uh, uh, individual thought patterns, maybe maybe uh, yeah yeah what one of those one of those the, the records with uh gene hoagland and uh yeah and yeah DeGiorgio. nice nice it all comes full yeah. circle man yeah, That's right? cool. go, man. yeah i know it's funny uh you mentioned uh you mentioned gene uh is uh we we did uh one of those dime bashes together uh nice. we've done those a couple a couple times together i should yeah. Songs together, but what I think it was the first one I ever did, and I'm hanging out backstage, and Gene comes up to me and he puts an arm around me. You know, he's like you know six, six yeah. years, forever. You know, and he puts an arm around me and he's like, "Me and you, we're the biggest whores in metal. We'll play for anybody." <laughs> That's <laughs> funny, man. And I was like, "Hey, man, if that means I get to be mentioned in the same breath as you, I'll take that." Because <laughs> oh, Gene. Gene and you are absolute legends. I mean, y'all yeah. been in some. some uh, I don't know about me, but Gene, well, really, first show, first actual concert I ever went to that wasn't in a backyard, like when an actual club was uh, Dark Angel and Doctor No at Fender's Ballroom, and uh, and you know Gene was playing drums for Dark Angel back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, wow. You know, that, that, that you know, it's kind of a full circle moment. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, we'll have to, James, there's another Cover Wars idea. So we, we do something on the show. Uh, we do episodes called Cover Wars where we take two different covers of a song and kind of battle them out uh, head to head and uh, which pick a version that we like better. Um, and so there we go. Uh, James, there's a, another idea. We'll have to throw it in the mix there. Yes, sir. Um, yes. So have you have you played any shows since, you know, COVID happened? Like any, have you gotten back on stage yet? No, uh, I haven't done a show in over a year now. I think. Yeah, yeah. So it's been a while. I definitely got the itch to get yeah. back out. I can imagine. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because places are starting to start open now. Because the first first mm -hmm. concert back that I saw was uh, Steel Panther, and yeah. you know they yeah they put on a kick ass show too. So yeah, can't wait for it to to actually see you. You know, yeah. Oh, so, that'd be awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, like we've we've been asking her. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't know. I was just just saying, looking forward to finally getting back on stage. Yeah, we've uh we've had some guests on the show that um you know we started we we started our show like a I mean a few a months ago, ago, but yeah, yeah it's been over a year now and you know COVID hadn't hit yet so um we kind of interviewed a few people like as it was happening like what do you do to like keep yourself busy and you know what's it what's it going to be like when you finally get back up on stage so um you know i know i know you've, you've got to be looking forward to it um so yeah definitely um i uh i've got a question uh we like to ask our listeners uh so our, our whole show is kind of based on music in relation to uh depression and like the healing power of music that it has and um so what is, is there any of you have like a go-to album or a song or anything? Like if you're, if you're having one of those days, and it's just like, I've got, I've got to listen to something. 
Um, do you have anything to throw on that uh, maybe could uh, interest our listeners to check out if they're going through a similar time? I don't know. Like it, it, it depends, uh, you know, what kind of mood I'm in. If, I, if I'm like really pissed off, uh, mm-hmm. was it, uh, morbid angels, blessed are the sick or was a, was a go-to for a while yeah. there, particularly the, the back half of that record, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I don't know, it's like, like if I'm sad or moody, uh, typo negatives usually where I go. Uh, okay. Yeah. For the October rust. Okay. Oh, cool. Uh, okay. So we do have two more questions for you. Um, before we, before, um, you came on, I, I went on Instagram and I asked them, uh, if they had any questions for you. Uh, we have two questions from you from, from the same, same account. Um, the account is the adventures of, of Dow Glover on Instagram. I've uh, got two questions for you, if you don't mind. Um, uh, the first one is uh, just how did you become such a badass of a player? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what you meant by that, but uh, uh, yeah. Tell him uh, I'll I'll let her know when I get there. <laughs> <laughs> don't work it out, man. That's a badass answer. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm there, so you know I'm, I'm definitely no. Uh, Billy Sheehan. So, uh, you know, if I ever get to that level, I'll let you know. Right. But we know, we know your Gene Simmons is, 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 uh, perfect. Yeah. Well, thanks. <laughs> I, 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 you know, it's funny because, like, you know, I, uh, I, I thought I, you know, singing it in the car, you know, I, I thought, yeah, I could sound like this guy, you know, <laughs> but once you put it on, on record, you know, and, and, uh, and you're hearing it in your headphones and it, it's a little different. So, you know, right. Well, I, think i pulled this off but i don't know so i sent it like hey let me know what you think man you know yeah. I, I might be right. uh, completely full of shit <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go okay uh so that was the first question the second question and and, and our last question for you today is um what was your most memorable gig with wayne because i know there's, there's a lot but if you could yeah. round it up with one what would that be Uh, the one that jumps right uh, into my head, uh, it, it immediately jumps into my head is, uh, I don't remember where we were. It may have been somewhere in Texas. Uh, I don't remember exactly. Uh, but it was, I think during the machine tour and yeah, it, it yeah, it, it was during machine. Cause we were playing, opening the show would get to the gone and Towards the end of the song, uh, there's kind of like a break where it's just drums. And I lifted my arms like this to like, you know, get the crowd going. And I hit my headstock and I felt it hit something. <laughs> and I oh, turned, no. and I turn and I see Wayne looking at me and he opens his mouth and his tooth falls off. <laughs> <laughs> and it hit the floor, and he shakes his head at me like, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and then it walks off the stage. Wow. And so we finish the song, and uh, we go backstage, and, um, you know, like five, ten minutes go by, and Wayne figures out that, you know, he, he's, he's not in a whole lot of pain, and he decides he wants to finish the show. Hey, man, so what's your burrito? Yeah, he goes out and uh, he finishes the show, man. And um, you know, he uh, in, in between songs, he uh, while talking to the audience, he kind of had that Paul Stanley lisp happening. So oh. yeah, <laughs> so he kind of sounded like like Paul Stanley, you know, and uh, it was a big influence. It was a big influence for him. So uh, yeah, yeah, that was that was kind of cool. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, he toughed it out and uh, he finished the show. And then, and then uh, the next day, he went to a dentist and uh, got that tooth glued back on. <laughs> <laughs> glued on, huh? Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, um, so that's 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 all of the questions we have for you today. Um, we uh, honestly, we thank you very much for coming on. This has been a dream come true for me and Blake. Yeah. And we do hope that you come back on um, after. Project Regeneration, Regeneration Volume Two comes out, so we can talk to you more about that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I just want to say um, thank you again, and yeah, 
Around yeah, where can our uh, where can our listeners find you? Uh, like on your socials and uh, any music or anything. Yeah, I, I, I'm really horrible at that social media <laughs> shit. Uh, you can find him on Twitter on uh, Tony Cable six 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 right under his his uh, name on the YouTube channel. Yeah, I, I have an account. They uh, that like when I was playing in that uh, Attica Seven band, uh, they set that up for me. I never use it. Oh, okay, gotcha. Like it, like. The only thing I really check is uh, Facebook, and I'm on that, like, you know. Yeah. Rarely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I couldn't even tell you. Um, but if you do send a private message on there, that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Okay. Social cool. media wise. Yeah. Right. Nice. And I, and I guess that's the Facebook.com slash Tony Campos. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. That- uh, oh, I, I, think, I think I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. We'll try it. Um, see what happens. But I think if you type in Tony Campos, I'm usually the first or second one to come up. I, okay. I and if not, so sorry to the other Tony Campos out there that's going to be get, receiving all these messages. <laughs> <in the world. laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, cool, Tony. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the show today. We really appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely.